the first thing what we need to understand is what is a middleware okay web logic application server is a middleware that's what people talk but what is basically a middleware see a middleware is a software component okay it's any software component that helps you to connect an application to another application or it's helped you to connect from a software to another software what the point that's a basic functionality of a middleware either it will help you to connect one application to another application or it helps you to connect one software to another software now what is an application server an application server falls under the umbrella umbrella of middleware okay an application server is a middleware but what does it do is that it also connects but what does it connect it connects an application that is deployed on it to another application or to another software for example i deploy java application that java application can be connected to a database that java application can be connected to a jms but the point is that that java application has to be deployed on your application server got the point so what does an application server actually do the main purpose is to serve the request and responses of the application okay you have this application you have hosted this application on an application server so with which it can help you to serve the request and responses this is what in common terminologies we call it as hosting hosting is where we are an application will be serving a request and responses via internet or internet that's all hosting is all about so what is a host host is where you have deployed the application so that could be a that could, that can be a representation of a machine or sometimes it can be representation of a physical machine or a virtual machine what what happens see an application server is basically like a house and your application is like a tenant to that house so your application server does all the work your application just uses that house and to get itself executed that's all it is all about now to execute a house to execute a application you require containers which is as similar as there is a house it's not a room it's a house so your house has lots of rooms each room does a specific job your kitchen has a specific functionality to perform your bedroom has a specific functionality to perform to your uh, your living room your bathroom everything has a specific functionality to perform so all these rooms are inside a house you are a tenant and you are getting inside the house and you are using all these rooms similarly an application server has something called as containers a containers does a specific job and your application which is deployed on a particular application server uses these containers to get itself executed okay now the fourth question so any few application servers in the market so these are the application servers that are highly available and which is now doing a good uh, trending in the market is your websphere application server that's from ibm proprietary web logic application server from oracle again proprietary jboss from red hat it's a powerful server and it's open source tomcat it's also a basic uh, application server it can also be treated as web server and again it's an open source product containers as i said please understand have this metaphor all the way that your application is like a tenant to your house your house is like an application server your application your house has got many rooms and each room performs a different task so similarly your application is deployed onto your application server an application server similar to your house contains many containers each container does a specific task let's see the basics of it the basic thing what you require is an operating system on the operating system you install something called a jvm that is the first and foremost thing correct without a jvm none of these things works why your jvm your sorry your web logic application server is itself is a java product so in order for your web logic application server to work you require your jvm to be installed that is the first and foremost thing the next part is that you install your web logic now here in this case i'm just giving it as an application server generic application server once an application server is installed the i'm telling you the basic format you will get three most important containers first container is an embedded hdtp server 
this is the most important container because this is the one which will be handling your http request if this container is not available then you cannot access your weblogic application server through http let me give a classic example what happens i don't have an http server embed http server simple you cannot access your admin console because your admin console uses http protocol no embed http server no http protocol got the point the next container is your web container this is the basic format of a container which can handle your servlet and jsp responses all your htmls all your jsps all your servlets will be executed in this web container then the third one is the ejb container now the ejb container is something like it has got classes which are related to server side what all the server side classes and all it's a different terminology i'll explain it later but understand it has got an ejb container to it and it will help you to execute certain components so if this is my house application server is the house and all these are the rooms okay now say if you have a so combined together is what you see as a web logic application server it will have your jvm to get executed on top of that you have the application server which can, which has got the containers so in sh short and sweet this is what your web logic server contains and all the bagera all the other stuffs are there but these are the mandatory stuff without this your application server will not work now let's so how this containers are used that depends upon what are you going to deploy say if you deploying a warfare so what is that you deploy war or year in your organization yeah year so now understand you can deploy just the year you can employ just the war basically year contains war okay now let's see what happens if you put only war then it will use only these two containers it doesn't require any jb container now you have heard a server called as apache tomcat in apache tomcat contains only these two containers it doesn't have any jb container that is the reason by default you cannot deploy an jb sorry you cannot deploy any er file on your tomcat server on a tomcat you can use you can deploy only war file this component is missing in that now what happens when you do an er is that it uses all the three containers you got the point this is the parts of an or components of an application server there are many but this is the bare minimum you can move over so clear what have i said now let's see some history about web logic let's see the origin story of it so this is this symbol i think you would have not seen anywhere correct how many of you seen this kind of a logo i didn't see this is the first logo of web logic web logic was existing as an independent company it is founded in 19, 1985 it is a very beautiful company they initially had containers there was no application service at that point of time after only really this guy came into the picture the term java application service came in okay before it was called as java containers only this guy has framed the concept of application service in java okay so when these guys came in they were new to the business and it was thriving good but the problem is that web logic as a company is very small in scale and it does not got that much of visibility this is the company that took web logic and did after that it became be web logic this is a fantastic company a fantastic company these guys took web logic to another level so because it has given so much of a tough competition even ibm was forced to re re rephrase its strategies to bring up a beautiful application server that is what we now call as web speed application server so this company was existing till 2008 after that it has been taken over by oracle so now what we have is oracle web logic so the first version of oracle web logic they came with version 10 if you see the numberings here it would be a bit confusing see this is the oracle naming nomenclature and this is the web logics versions 10g is 10.3 and 11g is 10.3.1 frankly speaking you don't have web logic 11 you have only web logic 11g you will get the point yeah but just want to know what makes the differences in this kind in this versions no difference see between this 11 this guy and this guy 
between this nomenclature and this nomenclature that's what you're asking yeah yeah between 10 11 and 12 no there are differences see it has been upgrading from 10 to 11 11 to 12 there are lots of differences architectural differences are there functionality differences are there some have some functions are deprecated some new functions are added so no, that's a past list if you want to know about that then you have to refer to the release notes of that particular product so from as she was saying so t3 to 3ts they have gone migrated okay new protocols were introduced many protocols were deprecated so things like that happens there's lots of differences but understand what i'm trying to compare here is not the differences between 12 11 and 10 but how the nomenclature differs from a web logic perspective to oracle web logic perspective you're getting the point say for example in 12 there's a concept called as uh, dynamic clustering multi tenancy all these concepts were not there in 11g okay when you go trace back to 10g there was some more concepts were not there that was introduced in 11g so the concepts and technologies that they upgrade every version is is because of two particular reasons one is a market demand two is a technological advancement now what is a technological advancement very simple i see some kind of an issue that been facing from applications or from the end users so these oracle guys or any company they will get the feedback from the customers so they say okay there's a requirement huge requirement for this particular functionality so let's incorporate build that functionality and incorporate into your application server that is a technology advancement that is driven by the technology then there's something called as market competition what is a market competition just because this this feature is available with websphere weblogic implements it and since because it is web, available with weblogic websphere implements it they will always implement or have the functionalities or technologies since because the other guy has it so these are the two ways that your version gets upgraded either it is because of your technological advancement and market demand or it is because of your peer competition got the point so the final part is the about the course that we want to see so this is the course that i'll be offering so it consists of 15 sessions okay each topic i have given it as a session but each session doesn't mean that it is one hour or something it, it goes some sessions take two hours some sessions even goes three hours or something when it comes to installation and all so the first and foremost thing is that you should understand the middleware concepts there are lots of concepts novantic concepts that are there in middleware and since because you we are talking about a technology that belongs to oracle we should also understand there's a, there's a concept called as fusion middleware even you use it or not you should be knowing about that concept because that is the main reason why oracle bought weblogic okay so we'll be talking about that that's a small theory session then we will be discussing on j2w so discussion on j2w will be having in bits and phrases because see the whole thing is java we are going to de- de- deal about jvms we are going to deal about application packaging we are going to deal about class loading we are going to deal about uh, uh, troubleshooting threads heaps and all so j2w is throughout the course but to give you a glimpse of it to give you an overview of it why this j2w is there and how does it affect my web logic server and what is that i should know about the j2w concepts that we will be discussing in the session then comes to the technology overview so how the integration happens i have just taken three components the http server the application server and database server and let's see how the dynamics happens between these three then we will be moving on to the setup the installation part we will see how to set up this environment there are modes of setup that we need to do there are types of installers with which we will do it and during the installation we will see again so the concept of troubleshooting that happens in every component that we do so when we install what happens what if how to deal when the installation fails and how to make that installation successful so these kinds of concepts that will be seeing in installation then the configuration part so you must be doing the most important part of the configuration is the creation of a domains so what is a domain what does it contain and why is that i should why do first of all why do i require a domain what 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 with which this with, with this domain what is that i'm going to do then in domain itself we are going to talk about two important server behaviors or i can say the kinds of servers the first kind is the admin server kind the second kind is the managed server kind post that we are going to see another kind of a java process called as node manager now a node manager is is a non domain process it doesn't belong to your domain it doesn't comes to your domain though you have scripts to start this start node manager inside your domain but actually it doesn't belong there it is just a guest appearance that you see inside your domain so we are going to see the node manager and how does it help you in crash recovery 
that's one of the famous features of node managers then we are going to see the concepts of high availability so again what is a cluster what is session what is a dynamic cluster do what is a static cluster do and we are going to see predominantly on the static cluster part because dynamic cluster part this point of time even in 12c they are being used only at the cloud environments in that, that's not in a private cloud they are they are still in the process of uh, making it stable so uh, we will see the basic concepts of it and the rest we will see the demos of how to create a cluster and all then inside cluster we have certain concepts like a load balancer internal algorithms of the cluster how it is where this is sessions being handled inside a cl cluster and all these components then we will go to deploy an application on the cluster and see how the, how the application behaves in the application deployments we have stage lots of uh, methods to deploy the application and we have modes like stage mode extend stage mode non stage mode and we are going to see how that behavior changes the deployment procedures again there there going to be a, another theory session where we are going to see okay post deployments what are the folders that going to create post configuration of a domain what are the folders that are going to be there and in each folder what is the important configuration files are there if something gets corrupted some file has gone missing or some file has got corrupted how to retrieve it back or how can it troubleshoot it which are the files which i need to take a backup before i make any change to the environment these are the concepts that we want to see then comes the jdbc part where we are going to connect the data oracle database to some database and what are the nuances of it what is a driver what are the kinds of driver that we have what is a connection what is a data source how many data sources are there and which scenario what data source needs to be used how does the parameters inside a data source will is going to affect my connection to database so all these things will be seen in the data source part then comes the messaging system so how with web logic how i'm going to use my messaging model so if my application demands a messaging system how is that i'm going to use with my web logic so what are the things that i need to create what is a jms module what is a queue what is a topic what is a distributed queue what is a distributed topic and what kind of communication that will be established and how i could view and see what are the uh, messages that has fell into my queue and what happens if i if messages get stuck and all these things we'll be seeing in the uh, jms part then the concept of security so uh, i'm going to deal the concept of security separately in a generic manner then i'm going to bring into web logic so what i'm going to deal is something called as cryptography where we are going to see what is a what is a security concept what is a ciphers what is encryption and decryption uh, what is exchange keys what is uh, data exchange keys then we are going to see about ssl and tls and how to uh, create ssl certificates what is the, the types of keys do and what are the extensions like some use pem format some use jk some use dot cert and what are these what what is this format and how to generalize this format so that you are not going to get confused about ssls then we are going to see about when web logic we are going to see how to create a role how to create a user how to create a group and how to what are the security policies that could be applied to that particular user and how to establish an ssl connection inside web logic so that i use from http to https then the last one is the troubleshooting part so troubleshooting part is more to do with your see troubleshooting is basically a skill it's not a concept or it's not a topic but we are going to see troubleshooting and performance tuning as a whole and we are going to see it in each and every topic that we deal with in performance and troubleshooting we will be seeing in jdbc jms deployments and every part but again when it comes to a basic concept of troubleshooting here we are going to see what are the logs are there what are the logs that are getting generated what is the log formats that we use here which log file contains what messages then we are going to see what is the thread and heap terms do then the basic troubleshooting techniques fundamental very basic so with that we'll be finishing our course